Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how to debug React apps using VS Code and not Chrome. So to get started, let's head to the debug terminal right here. So the little bug with the play icon. And sometimes you might have a blue button right here that says run and debug. Click it and you should be in this little view right here. So here we're first of all going to need to set a few things up to configure the debugging for a React app. So hit this little icon right here besides the launch Chrome and you're going to get into this JSON file. Here you've got a URL component and you're going to change that to localhost 3000 or whatever port your React app is running on. Uh, running on. In this case, this should be localhost 3000 though. So also make sure that your React app is running, of course. And now if you just hit this little launch button right here, then a new browser window is going to open up and also this little debug icon right here. And we're just going to place these next to each other so that you can see the changes that are happening. And now we're basically already in debugging mode. So if we just hit a breakpoint right here at return and hit this green icon to reload the page, then you're going to see that we run through this breakpoint, see our current count, the set count method, this, which is undefined because this isn't a class. And we can basically advance the code, continue, step inside this return value or whatever. Like continue, for example, would bring us to the div, then it would bring us to whatever rendering methods take place, but that's not always that important right now. So we're just gonna advance. You need to do this twice because if we react strict mode is on, then rendering will take uh, place twice. You can turn it off for debugging if you want, but normally it is not recommended because strict mode exists for a purpose of um, basically making sure that your app works fine. But yeah, it can sometimes be a bit annoying. All right, now we're um, basically gonna change a bit of this state management right here because we want to debug that. So we're going to create a function that's going to be set for, uh, for example. And that set function is going to have an any type because I'm using TypeScript for this example right here. And we're of course going to need to override the current set count to set. So set count plus one. And then the set method is going to run set count with n. All right, so now let's just try setting a breakpoint at nine and you're gonna see that this isn't working. Why isn't it working? Because you actually need to stop and restart um, the debugging process whenever you make a change. So this is a bit annoying, but using something like read, you're gonna make up the time. So it's gonna be about the speed of create reactive, I guess. But yeah, the debugging sometimes makes it worth it. So now you can add a breakpoint right here, reload, and you're gonna see that nothing has changed just yet. But now if we hit the count plus button, you're going to see that we have the value n, so this parameter. And if we just advance, then you're going to see that our count was actually changed. And you shouldn't, of course, click these buttons too much because that might uh, get you in some trouble. So always do debugging in a cautious way because otherwise you might get into trouble. So now let's just increase the count once more. But now we're going to change this n to an 8 hit enter and hit advance. And now our count is actually eight because this is a value we can overwrite in debugging. So let's say you wanted to test how your app behaves if you add null in here, or if null got in there somehow, then you're just gonna hit this button, go into the debugger, write null in here or undefined or whatever, advance, and then you're gonna see, okay, count is colon nothing. So I guess the app behaves as it should. Now let's just increase it once more. And we're gonna have one so the app actually behaves quite well with this nice now let's get to the next bit actually which is a little watch window right here where you can basically run code every time that um, your app runs on your breakpoint so we're just gonna check what n or what the value of n is in this case so if you now increase the count again then you're gonna see okay n is 2 so if you had a lot of values and just wanted to always see what the value of a specific method or value is, then you could do this right here. So I could add count in here as well to basically compare them. So now if I advance this, then you're gonna see they aren't available anymore. But if I add another breakpoint in the render method right here, then you're gonna see here they are out of sync. And now inside of the render method, count is three. And this is an uncalled reference because n only exists in this scope. So now we can remove the breakpoint again and everything is fine. You can of course do some more tricky stuff here as well if you wanted to run a function at some point. So basically we're gonna run into this breakpoint once more. 
And then we're gonna head into watch and say, okay, window.alert end. If you wanted, if you wanted it for whatever reason, you could of course also run functions here to manipulate state or whatever. And now if we just hit enter, then we're gonna see, okay, low close 3000 says four. So basically you can run functions in here as well to make your debugging a lot easier or to have some fun while debugging basically. But yeah, you can basically use these features to test your app to its strongest or weakest points and make sure that everything is working as it should or to find out why something isn't working. And yeah, you basically do it by just adding these breakpoints and if you're done debugging or if you found your error, you can just stop this and go back to your normal browsing sessions because reloading or reopening the browser every time you make a change might get annoying at some point. Anyway, I hope you're gonna find some use in this. I am definitely gonna use it at some point because I use debugging too little actually and I want to use it more, but the normal Chrome tools are just not cutting it. So I hope you learned something here and I hope you're gonna tell me what you're gonna use this for. And also I hope you have a good day.